Why are there so many notes? You don't need that many notes. A lot can do just what you did in 15 notes. This is so confusing. Premiere Pro is so much simpler. These are comments that I get on Instagram all the time, especially on videos where I show the note tree that I've used to grade certain clips. And I get it, note trees can be very confusing. So in this video, I'm gonna do my best to simplify it for you, to get you an understanding of why note trees are so good and why you should use them. Maybe jump ship from Premiere Pro or maybe stay if it's not something for you. So let's jump into it. When you open DaVinci Resolve in the color page, this is pretty much what you see. There's just one note in the note tree. A note is simply just a container that contains all the adjustments that you want to put into it. And a note carries whatever happened prior to it. So the inputs that are coming in from the green and the blue inputs, primarily the green one that we're going to focus on now. So if we were to add another one with Shift S and say, okay, this one, we are going to remove all the saturation. Now you can see that it went from a little bit of colored, it's still dark, to no color at all. Now our next node will have no color at all as well. And if I turn this node on and off using Command D, nothing happens because it's starting with whatever came into it from the previous node or whatever other node in the node tree that it's inheriting information from. However, nodes are non-destructive. So if I took this node and turned it off, seeing that we get a little bit of color back in our footage now, and I went to this node, now this node has color X as well, even though this node is still here, it's non-destructive, it's turned off. So we can see that everything is working again and the color is back because it's either passing on what's coming from the previous node or if that node is disabled, it's passing on what's coming from the previous node from that or the previous information, which in this case is the input of the clip itself. So with the basics of notes out of the way, let's get into what a note tree is. A note tree is basically just a range of notes that contains different adjustments. It's as simple as that. And you can combine them and put them together however you want in your workflow. And while there are benefits to doing it in certain ways, it's completely up to you how you go about it. So with that said, let's discover why it makes sense to have more notes than just a few. And with that, I'm gonna use an example from this clip here. So in this clip, I've basically just taken a conversion lot. If you turn everything off, you can see this is the lock clip that I had in the beginning. And with one conversion lot here, it just goes from the settings that my camera was in, Canon Lock 3 and Cinema Gamut, into Rec. 9 and Gamut 2.4. Now, you could do your adjustments both before and after. There are benefits to doing it before, very few benefits to doing it after. I'm doing it before and I have other videos explaining why I do that. But to keep it simple here, say you're coming from Premiere Pro, Final Cut, something else. How you would normally go about it is you would do all your adjustments on the clip or on an adjustment layer. So this is your Lumetri color. You can say that this is your technical lot that converts it properly. And this now is your creative lot. So if we turn this on, you can see I did a bunch of grading. And what I've done is I've adjusted the colors a little bit in the gamma and lift. I've given it some more teal in the shadows and removed that again in the gamma to give this a nice contrast and balance. I've given it some contrast by giving it an S curve inside the curves here. And then I've gone into the curves and I've adjusted the colors to tweak it in different ways so that it looks how I want it to look. So this is a pretty simple set of adjustments. This is three adjustments that I would normally put into three different notes or more, but this is essentially how you can put everything into one note. And you can see we can do all the adjustments inside here. So in that case, from, from the standpoint that we are at now, you could say that the people who say, why are you doing it this way have a valid point because you can just do it in one note, right? So here comes the issue. Say that I'm looking closer at this clip and I'm seeing my t-shirt looks very, very blue. Now there are different ways that I could go about changing that, but say I wanna go into my curves here and hue versus saturation, and I wanna lower the blues here to make it more white and gray to make that look nicer and get the whites white instead of blue. Now I can do that, but as soon as I wanna check what it looked like before, I have to do a command set to undo what I did, and then I either have to go and redo it or pull it up and down to see what I'm doing. This is fine if I'm doing one adjustment, but if I'm doing more things or I wanna see how different things work together, I either have to reset it and then go back by undoing it, command set in my case here. And the same goes here. If I wanna see what all my hue versus hue things does here, I have to disable it and then enable it again to see what it actually does to see the before and after. And if that's how you wanna go about it, that's completely fine. But now let me show you why no trees are so strong and why you often see people have a lot of notes in the note trees. So I have a duplicate of the same clip. 
I actually did the exact same adjustments to this clip as well. So you can see the t-shirt is now blue again. So if we pull this up in full screen again here or in the largest that it can be, now you can see that we have a handful of notes here. We have our conversion, we have some curves, primaries, contrast, exposure, and balance. And actually, I already forgot that these also contain some exposure adjustments here in the gamma and a little bit of balancing here in the offset. So actually additional steps that I already forgot that I had because they're kind of just hidden in here. And while if you know what you did, as soon as you spend one day away from it and you come back and I just spent half an hour away from this setting everything up, I already forgot half of what I did. So knowing what I did to adjust the balance and everything just kind of becomes a little bit difficult and a little bit messy to figure out and go about. So with having this set up here instead, you can see it was the same grade. Now I can actually see, okay, my balance node, if I know what I'm doing with balance, I know that my offset here is probably where I've changed things. So if I turn this off, now we can see this is with the balance off and this is with the balance on. Now, if this looks nicer or worse for you, that's completely subjective and up to you. But what I can do here is now I can turn on and off all my adjustments. So this is the exposure, it's just minus two in gamma. Same with the contrast, I can turn that on and off. I can turn my primaries on and off and I can turn my curves on and off. Basically any note that I make, I've just taken everything I did in the other one and split it out into five different notes. And while this might look confusing, as soon as I have this labeled and with practice knowing what I've been doing, I easily know what every step of this is and how I'm going about it. So while I could still go with this method, I think it makes it so much easier to comprehend what I'm doing in this setup because I can build it out myself and it's personal to me how I do it, it makes it easy to turn things on and off and even tweak things. So if I want, want to go into my curves here, as we did before, and I wanted to turn this down, now I can see just what my curves does instead of having to go back. And if I wanted to take it a step further, which I personally don't, I could also split up the hue versus hue in one and the hue versus set in another one, and that would make it even easier to do these adjustments on an individual basis. So you can build a note tree as large and as small as you want to, and you can stack up some of these things if you want to, but the more you have them split out in a way that makes sense, the easier it is to go back and forth and seeing, oh, maybe my balance adjustments actually made things look a little bit too yellow. So maybe I wanna go back here and I wanna add a little bit of blue back to make it less yellow. Now that's super easy to do because I just have it in my balance node and I can again turn it on and off to see if I like the adjustment that it did to my grade or not. And I can just turn it off or delete it if I don't like what it did. Now to label a note, you simply just right click it and say label note, or I have set my keyboard shortcuts up to being so I can just easily label out all my notes and make it easy to understand and see exactly what I've done on each of them. So essentially, if you're coming from another software, I don't believe that this is much more technical than that. You have a lot of the same tools. You have even more in DaVinci, just allowing you to do more, but you can stick with the basics to go into the lock wheels and just adjust your shadow, midtones, and highlights if that's what you're comfortable with. So you have a lot more that you can do and work with, and you also have some benefits that I'm not gonna go into here with parallel notes and layer notes that makes it even more advanced and even better to use notes. But if we're sticking with the simple things, you can always check out the video at the end, which is explaining what all the different notes does. But for what we're talking about here, this is note trees. This is a simple note tree, but you can build them as large and as small as you want to. So now comes another question that I get often is, okay, but you build out these note trees, now you have to do that for every single clip that you're working with, right? No. So if you're used to having, let's say, a adjustment layer in Premiere Pro, you can take an adjustment layer here, just pull it in and put it over your clips. And you could go in here and say clips, this is my adjustment clip. I can just take this, copy it to my adjustment clip, and turn everything off for my other clips here. I don't have anything on. And if I go back to my timeline now, now I have all the clips graded along with how I would like them to be. And now I could go into each individual clip and say, okay, this looks like this now. So if I reset this one, I could go in and say, okay, I need to be a little bit darker, lower the lift a little bit, and increase the gamma a little bit. And now I have this that is just lying underneath the adjustment layer. Now, if I don't wanna use adjustment layers and I don't really use adjustment layers, this is just to show you how I would go about it when I grade it in Premiere Pro or in other softwares. Now I could go in, turn this on again. I can just highlight this clip, hit Command C, or Control C on Windows, 
go to another clip and hit Command V. And now I have this again. Now I can go into my exposure and say, okay, I need it to be a little bit darker, maybe a little bit darker in the lift again. And now all my adjustments are working on this clip as well. Now I could tweak it even further if there's something else I want to do, but the base grade is already there. My grade is already there for what I did. I could also take the parts that are mostly grading and put them into an adjustment layer or go a step further and put them into a timeline node, which I'm not gonna open up here, but basically that just allows you to build out a node tree on the entire timeline without having an adjustment layer. And again, I could go to another clip here and do the same, adjust the exposure a little bit, and now I have a clip here. So it doesn't have to be technical, it doesn't have to take long because you're building out node trees. Now you could also take it a step further and say, okay, this is a grade that I'm always doing. This is my base grade. So I could go into gallery, right click grab still and say great if i could spell that would be easier great now i have this i could also put it into my power grade here but for now we're just going to stick with it here heading into another one if i reset this i can just right click and say apply grade and i can even highlight multiple clips and do the same and now what you're seeing here is again i have my entire grade here just applied to my clip ready to adjust and ready to go so I don't really think it holds up with saying that the node trees are more complex or more difficult to use. It's basically the same, just allowing you to split out your adjustments so that it's easier to see what they're doing. It's easier to organize how they're doing things. And there's no valid point in saying that it's more difficult to do it across clips. Because if you're using the Lumetri color, then you've been used to copying that between clips. And if you're using adjustment layers, you can do the exact same here. Not that I would say that it's a good idea, but you could. If we go back to the basics again, a node tree is just a series of nodes that have individual adjustments to it. And you can put as many as you want into a node and you can put as few as you want into a node to build it out exactly how you want it and make it easier for you to understand how you do it and how you get the best possible grade for you. I said there are other benefits to using nodes as well. This was just to give you the most simple explanation that I could and hopefully cover a few different corners that might have you question things. If you have any other questions or doubts about how nodes work and how the node trees work, feel free to leave a comment below and I'm always happy to help or guide you to a video I've already made covering that subject. So with that said, I'll just catch you in the next video.